Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com. The ChrisVossShow.com. Hey, we uh, uh, here with another podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. We have a ton of different interviews going, coming up here uh, on the show. Some wonderful, interesting people, uh, some book authors, some CEOs. Uh, we also have some uh, different politicians coming on the show as we come through into campaign season. You can see a lot more of that over on the TheResistanceRadio.com, the Resistance Radio podcast. So you can check that out. You can see all nine of our podcasts at thecvpn.com or chrisvosspodcastnetwork.com or you can go to youtube.com for slash chrisvoss to see the videos if you don't want to listen to the audio portions of the thing. Uh, get you and your friends to subscribe. We certainly appreciate it. There are now over 500 episodes on uh, our podcast. You can go back through all of them on the chrisvossshow.com. You can review them. You can listen to them. Uh, great CEOs, great authors, great opinions, and everything else. And you can learn so much from that data. Same thing with the Chris Voss Show on YouTube. I think there's like 3,500 videos over there. Holy crap. So be sure to go check out that data, consume it, and everything else. Uh, so let's get into the podcast. Today uh, we top out with the news that uh, yesterday trending on Twitter was uh, the trend hashtag to try and get uh, Trump removed from Twitter, that it was time for him to go. And pretty much the whole community of Twitter was calling out for the president to be removed. Um, largely, uh, there, it's a compilation of just about everything he's done on Twitter. Uh, the disinformation, the lies, the the attacks, the viciousness. Um, it really is sad. And um, uh, a large part of the focus of this was Joe Scarborough and uh, the MSNBC host of Morning Joe. Uh, full disclosure, I'm a fan of his. Uh, and I watch Morning Joe almost every morning. But still, this is the um, fight over the truth. And um, the story as it goes, tw uh, 19, 20 years ago, one of Joe's, um, um, I guess, assistants or whatever in the cam in campaign, he was out of town at the time, uh, had a heart condition. She fell. The coroner's office uh, marked it up as it was. And uh, the, just the whole story is so far-fetched that you could uh, turn it into a conspiracy, but that doesn't stop people that are ugly like Donald Trump. And uh, since then, uh, he uh, spoke out a lot about a lot of lies, even inferring that they had had a relationship. Just anything to get back at uh, Joe Scarborough, who's a member of the press, who's speaking truth to power, who's exercising the First Amendment. This is what our press does. This is what our founding fathers wanted. So, um, and it's just a summation of the hatred, division, and uh, lies that Trump has been uh, propagating since he began running for president. You could probably even say before that when he used to hate tweeted Obama and his racist mythology, uh, going back to, I think he started that in about 2012 or pro probably earlier than that. I think once Obama, Obama became president. So Twitter has been, uh, stuck with what do they do? I mean, I would give you that, uh, Twitter was pretty boring and pretty dead up until Donald Trump, uh, uh, one office and that has definitely he's definitely been the people that have made them the most um, I, I suppose get the most traffic uh, be the most popular uh, I don't know if they're the most popular but you know what I mean getting more popular and so Jack has been stuck behind between this and a hard place where you know he's got to decide you know he, he's got this president on here this person I should probably say more accurately who is tweeting stuff that anybody else like you if you or I tweeted just a small fraction of what this person um, he tweeted out we would have been banned you know time and time again uh, from the platform uh, there's per certainly many people have gotten banned from the platform for less and uh, so Jack is stuck the CEO of Twitter between kicking this guy from the thing um, and I kind of understand some of what Jack's going on about. Kara Swisher wrote a great article. I implore all of you to take a listen to it. And I'm not being political here on the Chris Voss show. Um, I, I suppose I've injected a little bit of it. But but for the most part, this comes into technology, Twitter. And we'll, we'll get to some other tech news here in a bit. But uh, Jack is stuck between what do you do with this situation. Now, a lot of people, uh, if you read Kara Swisher's article, she references a letter put out by the widower of 
the uh, young lady who passed away in Joe Scarborough's office, uh, calling out for Jack to at least delete the tweets, to remove them from Twitter. A lot of us supported that. A lot of people retweeted that. I did myself. Um, I felt at least Twitter should delete his tweets, um, if not <laughs> remove them from the platform. But I got to tell you, I, from all the action that I see on Twitter, it would be a pretty empty place if they kicked Trump off. And I think they know that. And it's sad that we're stuck in this uh, point of life that we have to decide between, well, I don't have to, but Twitter has to decide between making money and uh, and uh, maybe staying in business. He's making threats to them now this morning about uh, putting him out of business. Um, but this is the big challenge that we have. These These people want to make these vehement lies, these conspiracy theories, this disinformation to deceive the American public. And uh, we they can't, you know, this is the one guy they can't kick off the platform. Uh, they've even kicked the president of Brazil off for some of his disinformation that he's put out. Uh, but unfortunately, this guy has the ability to do damage to them, uh, probably on a severe basis. And, you know, there's some other aspects of that as well. I implore you to read uh, Kara Swisher's article and the article of the uh, widower of this young lady. Uh, it will bring a tear to your eye, and it's definitely heartbreaking. And 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 to think of the damage that goes to these families, we, we've seen the fallout of the damage, or hopefully many of you researched the down, damage of what happened in the Sandy Hook families where they had, literally had to move. They're persecuted and hunted by uh, all the crazy conspiracy nut jobs that were out there, um, et cetera, et cetera. And now this is going to... Uh, descend on this family and it's just completely inappropriate un-american and disgusting on one hand when i've talked to people about this uh i i can see where uh you it's important like if if we had known how crazy nixon was how far off the rails how bet she was drinking to a point that the joint chiefs of staff said if he calls in a nuclear strike don't exercise it without checking with us um if we had seen how far off he was the rails, what kind of person he was, the swearing, the things that really surprised Americans in the 70s when they heard the tapes, if they had heard any of that during the first four years of Nixon's office, he would not have been reelected president. At least that's my opinion. Uh, and so what we have is a lot of presidents, you know, they kind of get to hide behind the PR veil of the White House. They get to, you know, they've got all sorts of people who, you know, no matter what they say or how they say it, sometimes we don't hear about it till later in books and stuff and people that were around. Um, and by then it's too late to, to be actionable. Um, you know, we're hearing in real time the uh, dysfunction of this president, the dementia, the frontal lobal um, the collapse of him, watching him at Memorial Day sway back and forth from the frontal lobal dementia, um, the jerking of his arm, which is a, a portion of that as well, uh, his his anger and his uh, his lies and all the stuff that he does and his belief in narcissism are also indicators of that disease. Uh, he is melting down in public. But in one case, it, it may be better that we do that. Maybe, and I think Jack looks at that from an aspect of um, this is a guy that it's better to have him, uh, you know, showing who he is in full display on Twitter so the voters in 2020 can make their choice. Um, I, you know, you'd almost rather have that. But there is a line. There's There, there has to be a line. The man can't just go around and kill people on Fifth Avenue, which is basically what he's doing on Twitter. And actually, if you read the legal documents of what his uh, attorneys are arguing right now in SCOTUS and have argued up in, uh, in prior uh, court arguments, if you read law like I do, uh, they are arguing that he is able to, he could murder someone and get away with it as long as he's president and he would not be able to be held accountable. They have His attorneys have actually stated that in court documents. They are trying to make this gentleman a king. Beside that of politics, um, I think Twitter has some real issues. Now, Twitter, for the very first time, has put in uh, these, uh, these uh, things that say 
uh, stuff about two of his tweets, and they're about tweets for mail-in ballots. They have added nothing, and what they do is they basically give a warning that this tweet is not is incorrect. It's bad information. It's disinformation, and they link it to data that disputes it and speaks otherwise. So I think that's important. The only problem is is now he's really pissed that 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 there is a authority saying, you know, he is his dis, you know, he's disinformation. Maybe he'll call Twitter fake news and quit Twitter. <laughs> but I think it's important uh be, us being able to monitor him on Twitter is important, but also uh you know, it, there needs to be signposts and I would remove his tweets if I was um the, about the Joe Scarborough situation with the young staffer. I would remove those tweets. And I would probably also call the White House and say, you know what, uh, here's the thing, either dial it back or we will remove you from the platform. I mean, that's just it. I mean, you, you've, there, there comes a time in this life where you got to stand up for something and you just can't roll over and you got to realize the world is bigger than yourself and, and you've got to take chances. <laughs> so I would rather be known for somebody who went down in flames because they stood up for the right thing, because they stood up for humanity and got burned for it uh, by the evildoers than be someone who was complicit and who cowered in the face of adversity. So uh, that's my take on it. Um, and uh, I'm curious what yours is. You can tweet me at Chris Voss um, on Twitter. Uh, you can, of course, follow me on LinkedIn, every place else. But uh, I think it's really great that they have taken and marked his tweets and they need to market some more because here's where we're at in our society. People, I, I remember going up like, you know, 20, 30 years ago and we started seeing them having to put signs on stuff because people were so fucking stupid. They would do Darwinistic sort of activities. And then when they would kill themselves from their stupidity, their families would sue and people would have to pay incredible amounts of money because they were too dumb not to do what they're doing. We had to see stuff like, you know, warning labels, like don't drink the bleach. Don't uh, let your babies play with plastic. Don't jump off the bridge. You will die. You know, stuff that, you know, anyone with half of a fucking brain could be like, mm, yeah, if I jump off the bridge, the likelihood of me dying is probably going to happen. You know, and they're just not... And so they had to start putting these notices everywhere. And we've reached this Darwinistic idiocracy society where we actually have to put up warning labels and go, no, this is wrong. This is a lie. This is different disinformation. Uh, you know, and this is the big war we've been having for the past uh, six or seven years on Twitter, Facebook, and other places, the disinformation campaign, etc. I'll be talking on one of our other podcasts about Facebook's recent uh, uh, articles, I believe it's the Wall Street Journal has written some articles on them. We'll talk about that on another episode of, uh, of Facebook and dealing with the 2016 and some of the ways they've dealt with divisiveness and conservatives attacking them for kicking their crazy conspiracy stuff off. But we are in a war of logic, facts, reality, and truth. And this is the battle that we are in to get to truth. So I'm interested to hear what you think. You can uh, tweet me at, at Chris Voss. You can, of course, let me know at Chris Voss at the Chris Voss show.com what you think. I'd be kind of curious. And uh, we'll talk about it some more on the show. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. This has been kind of a battle going on between Twitter, Jack, and Trump for a long time. Uh, there's been different warnings given to him that they were going to finally do this. And now it looks like it may come to a head. And uh, um, it will be interesting to see what happens. <laughs> Jesus, wow. Uh, just crazy stuff. Um, according to The Verge, Amazon sent a script and video to U.S. TV stations promoting its safety measures. At least 11 stations aired some form of it, and 10 did not divulge the source. This is what we're talking about in the prior bit. Uh, you know, we need to get back to truth. We need to get back to sourcing facts. Um, those of you who are out there in the, in the sphere, passing around news, sharing items, you need to source your news. You need to get down to facts and dial this down. Truth is, is becoming like gold these days. The reality of facts and truth are, are becoming the most, uh, rare gems that are the most important as our society is disintegrating with this lies and disinformation. Um, 
I'll be talking about this on another podcast, but this is from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, sources and documents talk about how Zuckerberg and others shelved damning research into Facebook's polarizing effect, weakening efforts to apply its conclusions to its products. So I'll talk about that in another episode. I want to kind of get in some depth to that like we did the Twitter thing. Um, so watch for that episode coming up uh, next up in the list. Uh, according to Coindesk, they are acquiring Tagomi, a prime brokerage platform specializing in digital asset training to bolster its institutional training business. Uh, more and more cryptocurrency goes legit. Um, and, uh, you know, I've seen some players that wanted to issue coins and they couldn't because uh, the SEC regulations and, and scrutiny. And so that's probably good. Uh, it's made the market, uh, I suppose you would say, more stable. I mean, more people want to see those crazy get rich uh, swings where it goes from, you know, 600 to 20 grand overnight. But, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, you've got to just see how that whole thing plays out. And uh, you can follow cryptocurrency stuff over on CryptoLifePodcast.com. Uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, sources say Amazon has advanced tax to buy talks to buy the self-driving car startup Zooks. The deal will value Zooks at less than the $3.2 billion valuation it achieved in 2018. Ouch. A lot of self-driving cars, startups, and companies really suffering with the coronavirus because they can't operate because those cars have got to be clean probably on a regular basis and they can't have, you know, multiple people stuck inside of them. So that definitely was something that pushed back us getting to self-driving cars, which I'm really buggered about. I was really looking forward to self-driving cars. I've been wanting that so bad for, I don't know, five or six years, I guess I've been seeing in the future, and I just want it now. But uh, with this virus, it's not going to come anytime soon. According to HBO, Max launches without Roku and Amazon, the two most popular streaming platforms that's kind of interesting they didn't put that in usa today is covering it and uh, they bowed with unlimited access to every episode of friends uh the big bang theory and game of thrones um uh, but uh, all you've got is a streaming player from roku or amazon you won't be able to watch so if you got those two units you can't watch hbo max how crazy huh uh, according to cnet Sundar uh, Pichu Pichai, uh, the CEO of Google, told employee Google plans to gradually reopen offices and is targeting July 6th at uh, around 10% building capacity, increasing to about 30% capacity by September. Think about what that means, folks, because these CEOs and these companies like Google, they meet with a lot of brilliant people. They probably spend a lot of people paying them to consult. And they're saying that their companies may not be fully uh, uh, filled with employees by 30% by September, the way things are going. So that means, I don't know, if they're 10% in July, 30% by September, it could be till the end of the year that they even reach 100%. And I'm sure we'd have to have a virus um, inoculator or testing or some sort of thing of that nature we're already seeing now the reopening is starting to uh increase especially in states that were far reckless and looser fast and looser with their um with their uh not only reopening too soon but uh, their guidelines of keeping people contained we're also seeing that americans just kind of think it's a joke it's like they they serve their one month time and they're just like i'm over it I don't care anymore. If I get the virus, I just want to get out and see the sun and uh, and go work. Uh, wow, man. It's crazy, the stuff we're seeing right now. And the virus is just taking off. Um, Alabama uh, was talking about how last night their, their Montgomery, which is their main city in, in Alabama, um, their hospitals are now full, going to overflowing. They're going in full crisis mode now in, in New York style sort of thing. And uh, the bottom line is that it's still increasing. Uh, even in places uh, like my state that I'm in, very few people are observing the mask thing. Uh, I kind of get giggles when I go out with my mask and my glove on. Um, that's, <laughs> there you go. I, I, what, to tell you what I do, I'm very, I'm very, I watched a couple nurse videos on 
uh, cross contamination. And so what I do is I'm using my phone and of course I pull stuff into my pocket like money or credit cards or, or keys and stuff. So I keep one glove on my left hand uh, when I go in and I wear my mask and I use the left hand, the one that's gloved, to pick up all the products, touch everything, touch the cart, carry it around so that my right hand is always clean. And then I go to the counter, put everything on the thing with the gloved hand. My gloved hand operates everything in the store except when I need to pull my credit card out or my phone for touchless purchasing. Put that in there. And then my credit card goes into my bags if it goes into the machine because I don't know, uh, you know, those things are dirty as all get out. You might as well just rub money in your face. Um, and so I put the credit card into the bag because now it's, as far as I'm concerned, potentially contaminated. I go out to my car. The left hand loads all the all the uh, stuff into the car, take the glove off. And what's nice is I don't have to use the alcohol that really burns my hands for some reason. That is alcohol uh, rinse things. And by doing that, I keep the cross-contamination under control. Uh, and I make sure that I'm not... I'm not bringing stuff home, et cetera, et cetera. I have some uh, family and loved ones I'm taking care of, and I don't want to – the last thing I would ever want to do is infect them. Uh, according to Gardner, global shipments of PCs, tablets, and mobile phones are forecast to top a 13.6 overall in 2020, with smartphones dropping 13.7 year over year and PCs falling 10.5%, which is kind of interesting. I just recently found out that Logitech and other companies that make uh, webcams – have all sold out because people have been buying because they have to stay at home. Crazy. Um, so there you go. Uh, just nuts. Um, according to Mac rumors, Apple releases the Mac OS 10.15.5 with new battery health management feature for MacBooks with Thunderbolt 3. Uh, manages battery life by adjusting charging patterns. Cool. That's pretty awesome. Our batteries will get smarter. I'm all for that. And as long as they don't light on fire. I'm looking at you, Apple and Samsung. And I love Samsung, so there's that. And Gadget says Switzerland is the first country to launch a large-scale pivot for COVID-19 contract, contract, contact tracing app. The Swiss COVID is the name of the app. It's using Apple and Google's API, and they're piloting a tra contract tracing app that uses the uh, Apple Google framework. And uh, yeah, so that'll be interesting. That's what we're all going to come down to. I guess we're going to have the same app someday. We're going to have Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and uh, whatever the tracing app is going to be called in your country because they're just using the Apple Google APIs. According to sources in Bloomberg, uh, TikTok. The parent company ByteDance uh, generated $17 billion, billion dollars in revenue and $3 billion in net profit in 2019. More than its double at $7.5 or $7.4 billion revenue in 2018. Holy crap. That tells you how popular they are. So they basically went from, let's see, 17. Uh, they, so they, did, they went from, <laughs> wow. So they went from uh, 7.4 billion in revenue to 3 billion in net profit in 2019 uh, to 17 billion in revenue. So they've gone basically in two years from 7.4 billion in revenue to 17 billion dollars in revenue. Wow! How about them apples? Um, uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, uh, major investors on Quibi, including Pepsi and Walmart, are seeking to defer payments as Quibi aims to cut costs after the last month's lackluster debut. Wall Street Journal, I got to tell you, um, I, I, I signed up for Quibi. I'm in the test phase. I watched five minutes of it, and then I moved on. I'm not really big a, a TV movie sort of guy. I'd rather play video games or something, but... Even then, I still watch Netflix. I watch my YouTube TV, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, one thing I do want to invite you to do, we'll give a plug here to one of our sponsors, uh, TubeBuddy.com forward slash Chris Voss. That's TubeBuddy.com forward slash Chris Voss. You can go there, and they will help you make all your videos awesome by helping you SEO all sorts of great videos and stuff like that. And uh, you can check that out as well. I use Every time I upload a video, I use them to set up, SEO them, uh, get all the keywords in there right, and everything else. So uh, be sure to check them out. Tell them Chris Voss. Send it to buddy.com forward slash Chris Voss. 
According to TechCrunch, Israel-based D-ID, which is working on tech to make faces unrecognizable to face recognition software. It's pretty funny. We have... We have tech that makes is that fights. We have one tech that fights face recognition by making the faces unrecognizable. <laughs> they raised thirteen point five million by AXA Ventures. Uh, it's disturbing that we don't have regulations that stop facial recognition in this country. Uh, and you know we've seen the abuses in China, uh, and it's and, and people are planning on it become so uh, either profitable companies that make it or. Uh, prevalent that some companies are making counter software for it. That tells you what our future looks like, people, if you're not doing the math. According to the rest of the world, this is an outlet, of course, uh, look at Ocash. It's a popular microcredit app in Kenya that threatens users to notify everyone in their contact list when they fall behind on loan payments. Holy crap. Okash is a popular fintech app in Kenya and Nigeria, and it threatens users to notify everyone in their contact list when you fall behind your loan payments. It's kind of interesting. It's an interesting peer pressure, I suppose, way of everyone will know you've you missed your credit one payment and stuff. That's pretty crazy. Um, I'll be interested to see how that works. I don't know. In in some places, like all your friends might also be credit deadbeats, and they just might also be like, what the goal? You screw the man. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, according to Media Nama, I don't know. You'll just have to see how it turns out. According to Media Nama, uh, Indian government open sources its contract tracing app uh, on GitHub, starting with an Android app code and iOS code coming soon after. Uh, this is the world of coding, man. If you uh, are a young person growing up, learn to code. I think it would be pretty awesome. This really struck me as crazy and, of course, like I said, we've talked about this much on the Chris Voss show. Um, we're going to see more disinformation, more craziness, more abuses coming into this election. A lot of interference from every different side. And this is why at the beginning of the show I said it's important. We all need to be paying attention to what's going on. We need to be paying attention to what we share. We need to be fighting for the truth. According to The Verge, despite being banned in China, YouTube has automatically removed comments with certain phrases that are insulting to the Communist Party. <laughs> they are calling an error. Pretty interesting. Somehow uh, they figured out how to game the algorithm, probably by marking or tagging it. And then once they tagged it enough in reports, uh, their algorithm went through and removed that. I'm guessing that's my guess. Um, cause you can actually do that when people, uh, spam fairly often. Uh, what's also interesting is they're finding that on Twitter, even though Twitter has also been <laughs> in China, the, uh, people who are running the Chinese communist party are doing everything they can to sow disinformation and deflect blame for the coronavirus. Um, they seem to be trying to provide an alternative message to what Trump is doing and blaming them. It's like the disinformation wars of one, one lying disinformation group fighting the other. No, you lied. No, you lied. No, you're all fucking liars, man. And uh, you can all go to hell. That's my position. According to Gizmodo, uh, Spotify uh, has lifted its 10,000 song cap on personal libraries, which is good for people like me. I think I have like 40,000 songs or 20,000. I have some stupid amount. So they've lifted its uh, 10,000 song cap on personal libraries, allowing unlimited songs. And the limit remains for downloaded songs and playlists. I don't download them. I mean, what's the point of it? You're on Spotify. Hello. There you go. So I am glad they're doing that because I have a lot of material, holy crap, on uh, my things. I think at one point I had like 4,000 CDs that I moved to digital back in the day. And um, see, so yeah, I'm pretty sure I have more than... 10,000 songs. I think it's like 40. It's like some stupid amount. It's crazy. So I'm glad that's happening. So if you like uh, Spotify, you can do that as well. One of my favorites is Tidal. Uh, Tidal is one of my favorites that I always go to. Uh, full disclosure, we've had a free account with Tidal for, since their beginning. Uh, but I love Tidal because it gives you that high-quality audio. So there you go. Uh, there's another thing that's uh, interesting on the market I also have a free account for that we tested for press. It's called uh, Cubuzz, Q-U-B-U-Z. Um, 
initially I wasn't that excited about what they put out, uh, but uh, they definitely have got their game up. They've improved the quality of uh, recording stuff there. So check that out as well. Uh, you know, it's interesting. You kind of have to have these different platforms because many of them, you know, don't have certain like, songs. Like I can't, I'm a big Metallica fan. I didn't used to be able to get Metallica on Spotify. I can get it now. And I uh, can't get it any, uh, I believe on title. And I don't think I can get it on Cuba's either. You know, they, they have to work out all these, you know, the back end deals, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So, um, anyway, check that out. Those are kind of cool. I'm glad they're, they're doing these changes so that I can have more access to my library and, and use Spotify as per se, instead of just having to go into my own record area and use the Microsoft Windows thing. Anyway, that's the news for today. We're in a few other different interviews up today with some different people that are going to be really cool to have on. I implore you to check those out. Please share the show to your friends, neighbors, relatives. If you get a chance, please go write a great review for us on Twitter or any of those other places. Uh, if you have ideas for the show or you want to give me some comment or feedback, please go to Twitter at Chris Voss and let me know. I Really appreciate you being a listener to the show and a subscriber if you are. And thank you for tuning in. Be sure to wear your mask, stay safe, protect your loved ones, protect people that you don't know in this virus phase. And we'll see you next time.